Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to talk about baptizing your Bible in my series on things I wish somebody had told me when I first started. If you look at the first couple pages of your Bible, you'll notice that in most Bibles there are some pages at the start, this one has an excessive number of them, that are on Bible paper. And I recommend that you do something on one of those pages to test out some mediums. And you can also do ones in the back. There's some Bibles that have tons of index pages in the back or sometimes even just a full blank sheet. And you can use those. Lots of different ways that you can test on your Bible paper to see if things bleed through. You can test out techniques. You can swatch out colors. All sorts of fun stuff that you can create in your Bible. And I want to show you how you, you can do it so it's not just, oh my gosh, I have a messy page in my Bible full of all kinds of swatch blobs because that's no fun, right? So I'm going to make something that looks a little like a stained glass window on this first page in my Bible. Now do make sure you're doing it, doing it on one of the pages that's Bible paper, because a lot of the Bibles will have other paper at the start. That first leaf of the book will sometimes be something like that. So I'm going to test out a couple colors or a couple different kinds of brands. I went to my grocery store and I found some Crayola. I haven't found any. I looked at a couple dollar stores recently because I've always said, oh, dollar store paints are fine and could not find any watercolors in my local dollar stores. So maybe they don't carry them anymore. But I found this in the grocery store for just a couple of bucks. And I knew that there were some of the cheap watercolors that do bleed. And so that's why I wanted to especially test so that I could figure out which ones they were because I never wrote down what they were when I found them a few years ago. So I purchased a couple brands in the, uh, in the grocery store. So this is a Crayola. And I just kind of threw some colors in here in, my, in each one of these little, little shapes that are blocked off with sticky notes. Super easy. And these are Crazy Art brand. And it's just another brand that I found in the grocery store again. Both of them are pretty weak in color. And the brush that I'm using is a terrible one. It's one that I bought that was a, a set of Crayola brushes that were, I think there were four of them in it. And this is the only one that stayed together. The other ones, the second I dipped them in water, all the bristles fell out. So yeah, I would not recommend those brushes. At least not for something like this. For your kids, maybe. But you can see that you can see through the watercolor there. You're seeing through to the back side of it. That's just because it's wet. Don't think it's bleeding quite yet. We'll find out in a few minutes when we look at the back of it whether or not it bled through. But every time you wet the paper, you're going to see what's behind it. And some people, and, and most of the time I do, I forgot this time, but some people like to put the paper in between either a paper or a Bible mat or something so that they're not seeing what's behind there while they're doing their painting. These are called Gansai Tambi paints. They're a paint that I've used in crafting before and they work fairly well. They're one of the kinds of paints that gets a little bit chalky as you use as they dry. So they end up with just like a little chalky residue on the top of them, but they work fine. Uh, the same thing with these Koi paints. This is a travel set of watercolors, but they work fine as well. They get a little of that chalky residue, but but they work okay. And they're these second two, the first two were the, the grocery store ones. These two are more the craft quality types. And you can see I'm just throwing the same colors in from all the different sets. It's going to give me an apples to apples comparison between them of what the colors look like, how they go on, do they bleed. And I am dabbing off with a little baby wipe, a little of the excess color because I want to try to not let it puddle up too much. This is my nice Daniel Smith paints. These are artist quality paints and they are significantly different than the others in that they're higher quality. They're going to actually not fade with time. All the other ones are not light fast, which means eventually they will fade. And this is a set that I deliberately wanted to use because I don't use them in my Bible journaling at all, but I wanted to prove to you that yes, these things can be a problem if you don't test. And these are called peerless and they come on these little pieces of cardstock that have paint on them and you just touch your brush to them. I've put mine in little sleeveys and made little color keys to them and everything, but I just don't use these paints. They also didn't move at all on the Bible paper. 
So even though I, I remember using them before and they worked a little bit okay as watercolor, they, they're terrible on Bible paper because they just don't move. And even though I was trying to figure out if I could move that color with the baby wipe, it didn't happen. Not like with the other paints. So different animal there. And then I thought, well, the color on that one was really intense for the Peerless. Let me see if I can get the Daniel Smith paints to be that intense in color. Because you can use the same paints and intensify the color just by using less water and more pigment. And so I wanted to see if I could kind of get this to match the intensity of those. And one of the things, if you dab off with the baby wipe, you're going to be lifting color off. So I'm going to try to let that dry, that let that air dry itself rather than dabbing it off because I want to see what happens. Can I actually get it to to be darker. Uh, I was trying with these cheaper watercolors to see if I could get them dark and I couldn't get them dark. That's as dark as they get. Those, those colors just don't get richer. However, for some Bible journalers, richer color is frightening. It might be best for you to have some colors that go on really light and then even if you paint over top of something you're not going to have the distraction of dark paints. So look at this. The uh, <laughs> The Peerless and the two cheap brands of watercolor from the grocery store bled through. The Peerless in particular, but the others as well. Now, if you're doing a soft design like this, it would not hurt to have the other side of the paper be this beautiful pattern. It's really no big deal at all. So if what you're planning on painting in your Bible is just going to be backgrounds, then you'll get two backgrounds for the price of one. You paint it once and you have one on one side and one on the other. I had one Bible that I was trying a painting of a boat on one side and it bled through so I got a negative painting of the boat on the other side and it was actually really cool. So I wanted to finish off the page and I just went around and just kept uh, adding color to the different sections of it little by little with different brands and you could also um, sketch yourself out this design you could even take a piece of tracing paper and write over it so that you can write down which brand you used in which section and then what I would recommend doing is writing it on the back of the page just in pencil really small just write down which brand you use so that later on you could use this as a reference and say okay I never want to use this brand again you could also take all of your paints, you and all your friends, to your Bible journaling group and test out each other's paints. And you could get a really wide selection and figure out what kind of paints you might want to invest in. So if somebody else has something you don't, it's an excellent time to test and try things out. Or if your kids have a bunch of paints in their school stuff, try them and see which ones work because some will work just fine and others will not. And until you try it, you won't know. So I encourage you to baptize your Bible with this page first. It's the least scary page to do. And maybe that'll give you courage to move on and try something else. And I'll continue this series for a little while on things I wish I had known when I first started Bible journaling and answer some of your questions for you. So if you have some, leave them in the comments and I'll talk to you guys later. God bless you.